I can't keep my mouth shut about this project I was working on, and uh, I can't keep a secret unless somebody says keeps this a secret. So, uh, so yeah, I was I saw an article um, about uh, this thing called Simple DB, where okay, it's up there uh, about building a database from scratch, and so it had this blog part article about like all the pieces of a database. Um, and I never really understood how databases work all the way. Like, um, as far as like the, okay, you can see that, okay. Basically around like this level, oops, that didn't work. That's not working either. Okay, never mind. I didn't understand in full like how databases work, so I was like, I want to try building a database. Um, but there's also a, uh, our, um, a GitHub repo um, that the, the, the author of the article had that is the implementation of that simple DB in a, um, in Java. Well, um, I don't do Java, I do Elixir, and I decided to try my hand at making a database. Um, and I was following along with this, this kind of pattern right here, and then I got around to the part about, like, storing the data on disk, and I was like, I don't know how to I don't know how you're supposed to do this. Like, there's B trees and stuff, but like, how do you save data in a B tree? I don't know. Anyway, um, I was looking around, and somebody mentioned that a lot of databases use a data, like, embedded a database at the bottom um, that they use, and so I came across uh, RocksDB, um, which is a, um, a Database, kind of. It's like the beginning portions of a database that uh, is a project from Facebook, and there are other databases that use it. For instance, um, CockroachDB uses, well, used to use it. They kind of switched to a, their, another project, which is um, has an equivalent API to RocksDB, but doesn't do as many things because they don't need it. Um, and I think there's like a MySQL thing, but there's a lot of databases that use my um, that uses RocksDB. And so um, I saw there was a, an Erlang library around RocksDB. So I started using that, um, and I ended up creating a very small database. Let's see, uh, does this work? Yeah, that works, yay. So, um, the first thing I tried to do was make a parser, and I'm horrible at parsers, but Nimble Parsec helped a lot um, as far as like creating that so that I can actually make, turn this SQL into what I need to, to traverse the database. Um, but let's see, the heart of everything is in here, these operations where um, I'm interacting with with uh, RocksDB to store data. And what I try to do, what I saw a lot of databases do is they store like each data field as like its its own like key value in in RocksDB. Well, I didn't exactly do that. Like I put all the data into one key. Um, but what I did do was take all of the the fields. It basically takes JSON. I take all of the fields and I make an index for each one so that you automatically have indexes um, or indices for when you're when you're querying. And the other thing I try to do is one of the things I've been fascinating fascinated about is um, the idea of using hashes to determine if to to prove that the data hasn't been manipulated at all. So I other thing where it's almost like a, a mini like blockchain to where you have a previous hash and uh, the current hash and um, the next data would have the previous hash which is just um, the hash of the, the previous value. And then it uses that hash and associate uh, um, along with the data here, along with the data you have to create a new hash so that you kind of build up like um, uh, that 
it um, there's nothing has changed that, that you can you can kind of prove that nothing's changed. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's kind of a work in progress. But I don't want, just want to show that you can kind of start creating a database um, if you like look at something like RocksDB and start to build on top of it. And that um, that's that Erlang RocksDB library that you can use to to do some of that with. And that's that's pretty much all I want to show. Thank <laughs> you.